getting on today. So alright, today's video, very special delivery came today. The brand new Age of Sigmar Skirmish Rulebook. Um, I talked about this video in the pre-order video. Um, I think it was about two weeks ago, maybe something like that. Um, but very quick delivery from Element Games arrived this morning. And let's just jump straight into it. Now I'm not going to go over the rules with this. I'll go over some of the stuff that's in it, but not like the rules, like really specific. This is more like an, an overview than an in-depth review. So hopefully you can kind of see what's in it, get the gist of it, and then to decide for yourself if you think it's worth it or not. But uh, remember, this book is only eight euro. I think that's like five pounds. So it's an incredibly cheap book. It's not hardback, but the pages they're not exactly. Tin papers, kind of like that. The cover is kind of like hard cardboard, but the pages are the kind of the thick laminated paper. Um, but anyway, enough babbling. Let's have a look and see what's in the book. Okay, so here we are. We have the very nice cover again. They're featuring some corn guys, which I always like. Really into corn. Uh, when Age of Sigmar started, um, you have your usual introduction stuff how to use this book um, and then we get into the first couple of pages are kind of about the fluff which is a mixture of the Age of Sigmar fluff the Vengeance of Azir uh, it talks about the mortal realms I haven't had a chance to read any of the fluff yet but I'll get through it tonight so I'm just going to briefly uh, gloss over it here um, and then we come into some of the newer fluff so we have Shade Spire's Curse and I think this what's over the next few pages here is where some of these skirmish fights are set um, so we have Shed Spire's Curse uh, Treasures of the Catafrans I think that's how, how it's pronounced a very desert looking area um, and then finally the Haunting Grounds and then that's it that's, you know there's not a lot in this book uh, page wise there is a lot in it um, but very quickly we move on to the skirmish rules so First up we have the skirmish battle, so this kind of briefly explains how it works, uh, what's the differences, um, so it's very similar to the normal rules with just some obvious obvious tweaks, um, some of the stuff had to be changed, um, the water band has to have a minimum of three models, you have to have a hero in it, uh, each model is treated as a unit, instead of having a unit of like five guys, each model is treated as a unit, um, allegiance, Abilities are there. Battle shock is still there, but it has its tweaks. Uh, it's changed just a small bit. I think it's per model last. I think it is or something like that. I haven't really looked at it in depth too much. Uh, summoning is not in it. That's it. Kind of said that on the website where it talked about uh, new rules for certain things, and it mentioned summoning units. But basically, it's, if anyone has a a rule where they can summon new units to the battlefield or replace other ones. Uh, that it's it doesn't exist in the skirmish battle game um, then you get some new command abilities for your heroes now I'm pretty sure I did look at this um, you do get the you get to keep the, the command abilities from the normal war scroll but you don't get to keep the inspiring presence so here we have six new ones, we have six new artifacts of power that you get to choose as well as the other ones in the General's Handbook. Um, and then rules for some mysterious terrain which is always pretty cool to have. And then we have rules for Shadespire campaign rules. Um, and this is pretty cool, we get six battle plans, we get Clash of Dawn, Treasure Hunt, Fragile Cargo, Vortex of Power, Assassinate and Seize the Relic. Um, this kind of breaks down um, what, how much you get for winning through the campaign um, which a lot of campaign rules blend in with the skirmish match play as well um, there's an underdog rule now so let's say I think for the campaign rules they the, the say start off with 25 renown, renown points which I'll talk about in a few minutes um, so if you have 25 and I only have uh, 20 20 let's say well then there's a difference so I get one re-roll for any of these that I want to choose from you can get like cast and roll run roll uh, battle shock test there's a few there so there is an underdog rule if you have um, less points because I was looking at some of them briefly and a lot of them kind of add up to like 24 there's some of them that you can't really add up to 25 if you wanted to 
Um, then it talks between games. Um, 10 points for major victory. Even if you lose, you're still getting 6 points, which uh, that's, I'd like to, I, I'd probably tweak that a little bit. Um, because if you're getting 6, like a major victory is going to be hard to get. So you most likely will be getting a major victory uh, most of the time. So the only difference is two points, and I, I don't know for sure because I haven't tried the game yet, but two points doesn't sound like a whole lot, although you can get two clan rats for that, two clan rats uh, is probably a lot in this game, so maybe a loss, I'd probably change that to like five or something, Um. Uh, let me see then, what else comes in here? Uh, then you get your, yeah that's, that's how you spend your earnings, you get um, for like for a major victory you get 10, that's your renowned points, then you can spend it on new models or new members for your warband. And one of the rules is once you add the uh, new person into your warband, they have to stay there, you can't you know switch and change them throughout the campaign. But again you can change that uh, uh, to a house rule if you want. Um, then you get the rewards of battle. Um, let me see how did, I was looking at this, how did this work? If you, yeah to see what treasures you get. So there's a whole list of stuff you can get here. Uh, one of them is, I think it's Ancient Relic. If you get that, uh, there's a special rule if your hero is a wizard, so then you get something different here to add on to that as well. So, and then the, the six kind of campaign, uh, oh, what do you call them? Battle plans. The six, <laughs> the six battle plans that you get are here. And again, a lot of them are, are the very same as the skirmish match play battle plans but there's like little kind of differences in it here and um, so then that'll bring you to the skirmish match play now this is for like tournaments or leagues or anything um there's a few little this is actually the first page it's page 21 it is the first page where it shows you what size tail the plan is four by four i never even thought about that until i seen that and i flicked through the back of the book and i went back and i looked through the whole thing and i said i think this is the only part in the book where it says you have, uh, you play it on a 4x4 four four area, uh, which I thought it would have been in the, at, at the front, in the, maybe, maybe with bigger war bands you could stretch it to 6 foot, but I still think that could be, uh, too big, um, so this says if you're, this kind of recommends for match play or for tournaments, you can recommend a size of 50 renowned points instead of 25 for starting a campaign, campaign. Um, and then if, as you go along further, let's say the first round, it says here like the first round is 50 points. Well then, you're getting victory points if you're winning. You're getting victory points no matter what, like if you lose you get 5, if you get a major victory you're getting 30. So it says in the second round, let's say you can expand your warband to 60 renowned points. The next round, 70 war points, or 70 renowned points. So you're kind of expanding as the tournament goes on. That was a pretty interesting part to read. Um, it mentions here about the house rules. And it says, um, I kind of like I like this little section to add in. It's kind of like a reminder saying, you can change this if you want, you know. Um, check that camera there. And basically it says, um, like missile weapons. If you want to change the range of them to no longer than 12 inches, you don't want to be blasting guys from the black, or from the black, from the back and there's no hope of getting to you. Um, and to other rules where you can only have one wizard per warband. Um, then we have the six battle plans, Clash of Dawn, Treasure Hunt. All of these look really interesting from the diagram here. I haven't had a chance to read through these properly yet and really take in what they are. But they're not very straightforward, you know. They're not like, just like set up two, two warbands and go head to head and clash. Um, they look really cool. The setups look really nice. Like, look at this one for Seize the Relic. Uh, plunders territory and relic hunters territory it looks like a really nice setup and um, then we move on then there's just like pictures of warbands they, they always seem to show the same warbands stormcast the corn and uh, the crypt ghoul guys some orc brutes in there as well but i think they're the only ones that they have for the new set that's out on their website now so that's it and then the final page of the book surprisingly at the end of this book there is no four page rules which i don't know why it wasn't added in it's just four pages i don't know why i just couldn't slip that in nice and easily at the back but um you can download them for free anyway 
so choose no water band that goes over everything here um, let's see all your models must be from the same Grand Alliance so stuff the same Grand Alliance so stuff like that is it's in the normal rule book as well your warband must include a minimum of three models and one of them must be a hero um, what's the other one here you can choose any combination of weapons from a war scroll but if it says you're limited to one and five that still kind of counts you may take you may take each champion model such as liberator prime once per war scroll your warband may not incorporate any war scroll battalions even if your warband would otherwise even if your warband would otherwise fulfill the battalion's organization requirements so there is no battalions in this which seems kind of fair um, which I think maybe it, that is something they could have added into this it is pretty small that's not a problem for me that's fine but maybe they could have added in small battalions like uh, if you take these two guys just small things like that or if you take certain guys matched together uh, to get these bonuses that would have been pretty cool um, but then we move on to the points, the renown points, the renown points tables. So we have everything from, we'll start off with chaos, then we move on to death which is pretty small, destruction and then the last few bits are order. Now there is some models missing from this, I looked up online, I think uh, warrior priest isn't in it. Witch Hunters, I think, them type of guys, they're not in it. Some of them aren't in it. I know for a fact that the Skaven Assassin isn't in it, but the Death Runner is. Um, so you get a minimum and a max unit size, which is pretty standard. But then you get your renown points per model at the end, which is pretty good. Uh, Skaven Packmaster is 16. Um, a Skaven Warlord, 20 points. So you're your warlord is obviously going to be or not your warlord your hero is going to be obviously the most uh, the highest point is but then you get cool stuff where it's like you get to take a rat ogre like one single rat ogre running around or two separate ones where they don't have to be in a unit or something like that Um, they can take one giant rat I think that's brilliant Um, I'm not sure if you can do them in the other rules I never looked at it but it's just when I seen it like this it's pretty there's no like anything here er, everything here is like you don't have to have a minimum of two everything is a minimum of one um i was also looking at the destruction i might make up a warband for my ogres i wonder if chaos have uh here we go bloodborne or corn bloodbound if you're slaughter priest corgorath they do have a corgorath he's only 16 points that's pretty cool um, so yeah you have your chaos you have your death your destruction and your order and that's it then then just at the end of it you get your warband roster sheet so that's the Age of Sigmar skirmish book I think um, what I was really wanting I think what a lot of people are wanting is a Mordheim level skirmish game for Age of Sigmar and I, to be honest with you now that I've seen this I don't think that's ever going to happen I think with uh, 40k's new edition coming out, some of the rules have been simplified again. Uh, not as simplified as they did to Age of Sigmar, but there's there's less kind of tables to keep looking at um, when comparing numbers and stuff like that. So I think one of the things that, G that GW are trying to do now is to keep the game, uh, or try and make it simpler to play, like have like an easier entry level, because when I tried to talk to people about how to play Warhammer Fantasy, I was like, fuck, like, you're not going to read the rule book if you're not really into it. It's, there's so much in it. Age of Sigmar rule book is four pages now. It's, you can't make it any simpler without it kind of ruining it, making it too simple. But, um, I think they're, they're doing good, they're doing well with that. The, they're simplifying it but they're not too simplifying it and again like they always recommend have your own house rules they said this with the house rules house rules <laughs> changing some things um, and that's always an option there's a few things I've seen in this that I would have maybe changed if I, if I was adding some house rules to it that's always an option and more than ever they've, they've encouraged that since Age of Sigmar has come out um, I think a simplified, a simplified game 
gives you the chance to explore your own options if you want to add stuff in it or you want to take stuff away you can do that now but overall it's a good book you know it's it's eight euro it's five pound um, you're getting your battle plans you're giving uh, you're getting the points for the skirmish rules um, you, you can go off and build your own war bands now you can customize your own guys I think the customization level I would have liked it a little bit higher um, it's kind of like you feel like when you, when I looked at it, I was like, well, it is just just Age of Sigmar with just a sweet a slight little tweak, f just to have less models when they're playing. And uh, but it's good. I like it. Um, it's another it's another way of playing the game. Put it that way. I'm looking forward to making war bands. I can't wait to build up my own scale war band uh, with a mixture of clan Mulder and clan Ashen and all that, or maybe keep them to themselves. That's what I'm looking forward to. But anyway, if you guys have got the book, let me know in the comment section below. Make sure to hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to let me know. Once again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.